So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this video today. We're going to finish develop our Astro game. Uh, so this is the second time I tried to record this video. The first time uh, was way too long, so this is my second attempt here. Anyway, let's continue with the tutorial. So where we left off last time, we just got the basic game mechanics done. We can move around with the ship, shooting, and when we hit an asteroid, it splits in, uh, yeah, in half, and stuff like that. So, let's just continue from here. Before we get started though, I just want to address a quite a stupid thing I did in the previous tutorial. And that is in this function here that decides how many asteroids we are generating. Uh, so I think we had a function something like this. We had round of course, and then we had this stuff to the power of 2 plus 3. But I completely forgot the times 2 here. Uh, sorry, the power of 2 on this, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, did this part of the function, and I stood there like an idiot, <laughs> and, and and said that it works and stuff. But of course, it didn't do that. But I have rethinked this function a bit, and I think we should use an arc tangents function instead. So if you don't know how an arc tangents function looks like, it looks something like this. So it starts at zero and then gradually increase to the to the limit, and then it's yeah, it goes towards the limit of pi over two. Uh, but of course, if you just take, uh, let's say, 10 times this function, and then of course you will have a bigger curvature like that. And to ease it up a bit, you can just divide this func argument here by, let's say, 25. And we should have this almost linear growth up to the threshold value, somewhere here on level 19, stuff like that, between uh, 10 and 15 asteroids. And you can, of course, tweak this function a bit to your liking. Yeah, and then of course, so we don't have zero asteroids at the start. Here we just add three to it, so we have three asteroids in the first level. Anyway, that was all I wanted to show here, guys. And then we of course round it also. Anyway, so let's implement this function instead. So we can just keep the math.run part here, and then we just say 10 times math.a10, that's arctangents in the math library, and we take. Uh, this dot level, since that's our argument here, divide that by a constant, let's say 25 here again, and then we just add 3 to the end. And hopefully now, when we reload relo the page and we have 0 at the level, let's see here, we should have 3 asteroids. Yeah, and that seems to be working. And if you saw the function earlier, if we have 10, if we're on level 10, we should have 7 asteroids. Hopefully that works. We have 1. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, we have seven asteroids. So that's working. Anyway, let's continue with adding new futures here. So I was thinking to first implement the part where we get hit by an asteroid, uh, or we check if the ship is hit by an asteroid. So to do that, that's quite simple. We just add an additional method to the ship class. Sorry, to the ship uh, object. So we can just say something like this. We say if this dot ship dot collide with the asteroid we're iterating over here. So this is inside of the loop where we just iterate through the asteroids array. Uh, so then we just check if this uh, if the ship collides with this particular array. And if it does, for now let's just log out our test message to the console. Uh, so just open up the ship class, add this new method. I think we call it collide. Uh, and as augment there, uh, it of course take an asteroid. And a naive attempt, I <laughs> like to use the stupid things here, is just, of course, just to loop through all the points uh, in, the, in, the, yeah, in the polygon and check if one of, uh, sorry, in the polygon of the ship and check if that is inside of the asteroid using the has point method on the, on the asteroid uh, object here. Uh, so that's simple. But, so we just say, uh, sorry, so we say for for i equals zero, len equals this dot points. Remember, we have the points from the uh, yeah from the super class here, and then we just subtract two from that since the first two points is the same as the two yeah as the two last points here. So we don't need to check against the same point twice. So that's why we just subtract two from then here. Then we say i is less than len, and of course i plus equals 2 this time. 
since we want to have the x and y values separately here. So I'm going to say var x equals this dot uh, points at i plus this dot x that translate the coordinate there. Then the y is pretty similar as so just i plus 1 plus this dot y like that. And then we'll say if aster dot has point with the x and y value like that. Then we want to return through, hence the point, sorry, the asteroid has to collide with the ship. Else, we just want to return false here, uh, otherwise. So, for now, if we just reload a page, and if we got hit by an asteroid, we should see the test measure written up in the console. Yeah, that seems to be the case. So, that means that that works at least. Good. Uh, so, I'm just now check, take it back to the zero level. Our testing here, yeah. Anyway, but the test message is probably not anything we want to log out here. Uh, so let's do some other stuff instead. Um, so let's do it like this. We can say this dot ship dot uh, this. Uh, we can set the positions of the ship. So say this dot ship dot x equals uh, this dot canvas width divided by two. So we set the coordinates back at the start position and of course the height for the y value then we just zero out the velocity so we set the x and y velocity to zeros like that uh, so for now when we got hit by a ship see that we got teleported back to the center of the canvas and I've got the ship here hence well, that's why the ship didn't stop so let's test again yeah, now it stops there. Well, it isn't good, so let's say an uh, asteroid panning and hitting the ship in the middle of the canvas. Then it should resp uh, respawn directly inside of the asteroid again. And when we later on implement the uh, extra life system, then it will lose all of its life inst inst instantaneous. So to do that, we just set a variable here. Uh, we can or we can set it on the ship actually. So we say say this dot ship dot visible, or we set the visibility of the ship, we we'll set that false. So let's just take that field here and set it inside of here. And we can say visible, set that to true at the start, and create it. And speaking of this draw flames variable here, uh, let's actually move it into here instead. Uh, <laughs> uh, and let's just set it false here. This is just we. This is just a small change. You don't uh, need to do this if you don't want to. But then, then we can remove this one here, and that should make this uh, function a bit more clean. Anyway, so we have this visibility variable here now. So here we basically say uh, if ship dot uh, uh, sorry this dot ship false dot visible. Then we want to do all of this stuff, of course, the thing below here. But if we take an explanation mark for here, that means uh, if not, the ship is visible. Uh, then we want to return, since we don't want to do this stuff. But before we do that, though, we just want to check if the spacebar is pressed. So we say input, oh, sorry, if input.is pressed uh, spacebar. Then we want to set the visibility of the ship to true here. Uh, <laughs> visible equals true, like that. So let's see if that works. So for now, when we got hit by a ship, the ship should disappear. Or not disappear, but shouldn't be able to move that list for now. And then we just press the space bar. Now we can move the ship again. But let's just um, make the, the ship not true here. So we we'll say if this we can actually do it inside of the ship class, so we just say uh, we can do it down here, so you say if uh, not this not visible then we want to return like that and let's see if it works now, so if we get hit by an asteroid bam, and it disappear, we hit the space bar and it spawn back in the middle of the canvas again yeah, so that's good uh, so let's add a life system now to the game and a score system in the game state, and that's quite simple to do that. So we can just say this dot uh, let's go to lives for now, 
let's say you have three lives at start, and we have a knife polygon. Remember in the original arcade game we have this small, uh, yeah, uh, what do you say? Yeah, you have the small ships in the up left corner that show how many lives you have left. And that is of course equal to, uh, should be equal to a new polygon here with the same points as the ship has, like that. Then we just make sure that we scale it. And let's scale it since we have the ship at two, scale two here. Let's scale this to 1.5, it's a bit smaller than, than, the, than the ship. And since the, uh, yeah, the ship is facing to the right when we start here, uh, let's just make it like this. So I can prove my point. You can see that the ship is uh, facing towards, towards the right. So we just want to rotate uh, the ship uh, 90 degrees to the left here. And that's in radians, that is just math.pi over 2. Like that. So let's draw all the lives and see if it works. So let's go down to random method. And after we clear the canvas, or something like that, so just look through all the lives. Just say bar i equals 0, i is less than this dot lives. Uh, i is less, yeah, sorry, i plus plus like that. And let's draw it at, as a uh, particular position here, so you say draw polygon uh, this dot life polygon like that and for an x position let's put it at position I had a cheat sheet here uh, <laughs> uh, yeah Ooh. For x position let's set that 40 plus 15 times i so if we draw uh, uh, close to each other on the x-axis and in the y-position let's set that to yeah, 50 and just try it out so for now, if you draw a page we see the ships drawn in the upper left hand corner of the canvas so now we just want to decrease the number of asteroids each time we got hit so that's simple enough we just go in, down in the uh, yeah in this, in this function here and we just say this dot lives minus minus like that and let's just say if uh, this dot lives is is uh, uh, smaller or equals to zero then we just want to set the game over flag here uh, to true and let's just set that game over flag to false at the start here so we say this dot game over equals false that. But as you perhaps noticed, so now we can, uh, even if the chip isn't shown up, we can, uh, uh, even though we can get hit, and we don't want that, so just go back into the collide function once more, and then we just say if this not uh, if the chip isn't visible, then we just want to return false uh, directly. Here. Like that, so it's uh, yeah, can't be hit when it is uh, disappearing. So now when you see here, yeah, the lives go down, hit the space bar, the space is back up, and I got hit again, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's working. So we now have the life system going. And when I hit completely, then the game is over. But we haven't implemented the game over yet. But anyway, yeah. So let's continue from here. Ah, uh, let's draw a score to the canvas now. So that's simple enough. Uh, yeah, well not, perhaps not that simple, but yeah, it's not that hard either. So anyway, we'll set a score build here, of course, in the init method of the also in the construct of the game state. Set that score at start. One second, guys. Be right back. Yeah, sorry for that. Where were we? Well, yeah, we were implementing the score. Yeah, so we set the score to zero at the start, of course, and then we just want to draw that to the canvas. But we won't use the fill text method that, since that's a bit boring, I think at least. <laughs> anyway, so we will use this. I just uh, went forward and I just uh, created all of the letters in the alphabet and all the numbers uh, zero to. Uh, nine. 
and then we can use uh, can use these points to draw our uh, graphics to the canvas. And if you want to look at this code or any other code of my project so far, you can go to my GitHub page. Page just go to github.com as forward slash Max Boy, and you should get to my uh, yeah my my site here. And you can go into this uh, repository here, where I have a uh, collection collected all the code I've written so far. And if you go down into the Astro game and the JS folder, there the points. Uh, file should be in all other files as well. And if you want to copy this, you just press the raw button. That's probably a simple thing. Just press Command A or Control A and uh, Control C to copy it and paste it into your documents. Anyway, enough of that. Let's draw this uh, text to the canvas. Uh, so to do that, we will add a new method to the canvas that we call, oh sorry, the context uh, we created here the augmented context that I will call vector text uh, like that and as augments that just all parameters it will take a text to draw or a number and it will take a, uh, sorry, a scale factor of how big we want the number to be and then an x and a y position uh, so, as you see here, we have the letters uh, already in two different fields. We have the numbers and we have the letters. But we want to draw them uh, independently of one another. Uh, so, that makes this a bit harder to do. So. But anyway, first of all, we want to make sure that text is actually a text. So we say text to string, like that. And then we can say, just to make sure that all are uppercase, so we say to uppercase as well, like that. So we just format the string correctly. Then we take a, uh, calculate a step size that we want, and that's just six times, uh, sorry, yeah, six times s, or s times six, like that. For for the way I draw the, the, the graphics for this, so if you just go back, the polygon draw function here or program uh, and take the letter zero for example let's make all letters four four squares wide and six uh, squares tall and basically when we draw a new number later on so let's say we want to draw number two we don't want to draw it uh, two squares offset from that number so that's why we take six times the uh, yeah six times the S here, the scale factor to draw the the the, the, the next letter uh, with that offset. So when we have that done, then it's pretty straightforward. We just loop through all the letters of the text. So we say var i equals zero, len equals text dot length. I is less than len. I plus plus of course like this, and then we just say var uh, c h char equals to the text at i and we actually want the char code and not the text so we say uh, instead of this we can say char code at i like that and that take out the correct char code then we want to determine if it is a number or a letter so to do that We'll just make sure that we first of all add a new constant or a new value here to the context. So I call that uh, a code. That's just equals to uh, the short uh, the 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 short code value of a of the capital letter a. I think that's sixty five or something like that. And then we can say if uh, ch minus this dot a code like that, uh, and we say if that is bigger or equal to zero, then we want to take uh, okay, it's just, it's just set a variable p here. Then we want to set p to uh, the points dot letters 
because that means that it's a letter that it's yeah over the letter anyway yeah and here we'll say uh, ch minus this dot a code like that to to get the right points we want and if we just go let's just uh, look at this um, um, blog post here and you can see that yeah the numbers they come before uh, uh, the, the yeah they come before uh, before all the letters so basically what we can say then if we want to say p equals points dot numbers I think I called numbers. Yeah. And this we want to add the, the channel plus uh, 10, I think. That should be the right thing, right? Oh, it's offset that even stranger. Anyway, well, then we need to have the zero code as well. So let's just say context dot uh, uh, set code. Let's say call that zero code. That's just equal to this stuff. So we should throw code at zero like that. And we say minus this dot set code. And that should give us the correct number we want, like that. And then we can have loop through all the points using this uh, yeah, using this syntax here of course. And then we can kind of, of course get rid of that just to make sure that we have this in a step so we have it inside of the for loop that looks like it miss this is uh, uh maybe it doesn't let's see if we have all the what is that well that's that for loop okay that was strange we're at the end of that for loop <laughs> okay it's there Okay, okay, let's let's see if we can figure out the yeah, so that should be the right way to do this anyway. And since we are using uh, i up here, we can't use i here, of course, so we just make sure that you change all of those to lamp 2 and and i's as usual. So let's change this to lamp 2 j like that. So, and that should hopefully work somewhat now but one thing we want to make sure though is uh, when we draw each letter we just want to increase the x position with the step size of course like that and we will also want to make sure that we multiply all of the points points here with the scale factor like that so let's see if it works so for now we need to call the vector text and we can draw uh, the text to the canvas if you want so let's just write out a test message here so we can say context dot vector text like that and the message we can say hello hello for now we haven't blank space yet but we will have soon uh, anyway so yep um, so we have uh, hello that and then, then we have our position so let's say 10 10 for now just to doing our testing here and let's see let's roll page and see if it works well no it does not <laughs> so let's see what uh, so i will just bug these guys and i will be back when that's done so, uh, one second bye uh, and i will uh, figure out there of course we haven't in included the points file into our html file yet so let's just include it so we say script source equals js points but js of course like that but since we have the points uh, object already in the game state then we just grab all this stuff and put it into the points file as well for now so we don't have uh, yeah uh, so they don't uh, yeah screw up what which one another 
I just make sure that you add the additional commas and all that stuff so that it actually works. So for now it should work. It doesn't really do that, but yeah. So now I will debug it and I will back when I'm done. Yeah, and I'm so stupid today. Of course I haven't specified a scale factor. <laughs> I'm doing so stupid errors today. Anyway, I'm a bit tired. I, uh, yeah. Anyway, so open up. Yeah, now you can see that the hello message is written out where it should be. And yeah, I think we can just figure out the right position here. So I think we'll add it to, let's say, yeah, 35. And uh, let's try with 15 and see what that looks like. Yeah, here we want to draw the score. And let's just see if it works with our score as well. So let's say 2000. Yeah, you need to write that as well. But anyway, I don't know if you can see it that well in the video, but this text here is a bit, this isn't very focused. And that's because when you just have the stroke width of one pixel, then it, um, then it splits that one pixel between two pixels. And that's why you get this faint line like that. So to get rid of that error, or to get the shop rendering, then you you just add half uh, uh, half uh, a pixel to the x and y position. Just so say you say x plus equals zero point five and y plus equals zero point five like that. And now we can see that they are drawn sharp to the canvas. Anyway, we don't want, want to draw two thousand here. We want to draw the score. So we say uh, this uh, dot score that we set in the constructor. Then, of course, each time we split a bullet, uh, split an asteroid, sorry, it, or each time a bullet hit an asteroid, we want to increase the score. So after doing that, we just go up here when we, uh, yeah, after we have uh, checked if our bullet has hit an asteroid and all that stuff, we just to pull our switch statement and we can take it on the size of the asteroid like that. And we have all the cases here, so we have three different cases, so you have when the, when the asteroid is big, so when we don't have split the asteroid, and we have when we have split it once, so asteroid okay, size over two, and we have it when we have split it twice, so that's asteroid size over four. Like that, and then we just want to increase the score, so say this score plus equals, let's say 20 for the big, uh, for the big asteroid, let's make sure that you take a break there as well. And let's say 50 for the medium size and 100 points for the small ones. So let's see if it works. Uh, so now when we hit an asteroid, we should see that the score update. Yeah, that's the case. So cool. So that's it for the game. So we now have all of the game uh, play features done. Stuff left to do is just to add a menu state and an end state. And stuff like that. So let's do that. Uh, we can start by doing the game state actually. So let's make a new file in the yes directory. So you say game state dot uh, yeah, so not game state menu state dot <laughs> uh, yes like that. And here we say bar case menu state command max state dot extend like that of course. And inside of here, let's just grab all of the content from the state file and just make sure that we set, uh, yeah, there, there, and well, it isn't that important, but anyway, why not? Anyway, just figure out the uh, spacing of it like that, so that's good. And don't so we do the same error as the, as the last time, just make sure that you include the uh, uh, the file in the HTML file as well. So menu state dot yes like that. So for now, when we go into the main file and just make sure that we set menu state in front of here, and let's say that we want the uh, next state at the start to be the menu state. So just like that, we should get a black screen now when we load the camera. So that means that it works. Let's see. Well, we got some errors. Uh, the line 19 of the menu state. 
yeah, well, we have double this stuff, so let's get rid of that. Yeah, and now it works. So that's good. Anyway, so when we're doing the menu state, it's simple enough. We just want to render some text and uh, stuff like that. So let's just do that. Let's say context.vector text, like that. And we can say asteroids, like so. And let's not forget the scale size this time. Let's draw it big, so let's say 6, or something like that. And let's just draw it at 100, 100 for now, to see what it looks like. Yeah, so now I have the asteroid drawn to the, the asteroid text drawn to the canvas. And with, before we do that though, we just want to clear the canvas. Yeah, and let's draw um, another message here. We can say press or push maybe. Yeah, push space to play like two so. and let's set that to let's say two for the scale factor let's set it on 100 200 like that and now we got this error cannot read property zero of undefined and that's of course because we haven't so like when it's a blank space we don't have uh, the logic to handle that so let's just implement that so that's quite simple here we can say if the share of the code is equals to uh, 32. If you remember, 32 is means a space bar like that. And if you don't want to have it hard coded like that, you can just say context of, uh, yeah, yeah, let's get S code. That's of course equals to this short code at zero, like that. And you can just say this dot S code. Then we just want to increase the x value with the step size, of course. And then we want to continue with the for loop over all of the characters in the text string. So let's see if that works now. Yeah, so now we can see that we also works with the uh, blank space, like that. But wouldn't it be convenient to be able to center the text as well? So to do that, that's quite simple. We can just check here on top. We can just say if the type of x is not equal to a number. So if x is anything but a number, then we want to center it. So to do that, we just take the length of the. So we just set x is equal to uh, the width of the canvas. So context. Oh, sorry, this dot width like that, and then we take minus uh, text or length uh, times uh, uh, times the step size, of course, like that, and divide that by two. Just to make sure that we got uh, that we get our, our complete number, then we just round this mat around as well in front of here. So now, when we go back to the game state, or the menu state, sorry, we can actually close down the menu state, for, uh, game state for now, and we set, let's say, null for uh, x position, then we should get the text centered. So we can do that with our, that method as well, and we now have the, 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 the text centered, and that is dynamic with the screen size, so that's really good. And we can, of course, do the same with the Y position as well, so just copy this line like two, change this to Y, of course, like that. But this time we won't take, we'll take the height, but we won't have the, we'll only have minus the step size like that. As yes, as I said, each letter and number is six squares tall, so yeah, that's it. So let's see if that works as well. So we can say, let's say null here, and that will center it in the y direction as well. So that's cool. But we probably don't want it to be centered like that. We will probably need to have yeah, absolute positions. So let's say 180 and 260. Yeah, and that's looks like this. So that's good, at least my opinion. Anyway, but the background is a bit boring here. So let's actually add some asteroids to the background. So for doing that, we can just go back 
in the game state. That was stupid that I closed that down. Just go on to the generate level function. Just copy this part of the code. And let's add it to the constructor. We won't need a function to generate the asteroid. Anyway. And then we just want to add uh, we'll get a yeah, random number of asteroid. Maybe between uh, yeah, let's say between five and ten asteroids would be the same method random times five plus five like that. That should create uh, five asteroids for us. But we don't have this canvas width and canvas height variables. But anyway, yeah, it can be good so, to have. So let's create them to this dot canvas width equals game dot canvas context of width. That and this dot canvas height equals game of canvas dot context of height like that. So for now when we load we shouldn't get any errors. No, it seems to be working. But we probably won't set the position randomly uh, yeah at all times, so let's get rid of that stuff. Let's make sure that we say bar in front of here. So that should be good. And then we just draw them and uh, sorry, update and render the asteroids. So that's simple enough. We just say for var i equals zero, len equals this dot asteroids dot length. i is less than uh, len, sorry, i plus 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 this dot asteroids at i dot update like two. Let's just space it out a bit. Change this to draw this to context and yeah that should be it so let's reload and see what it looks like yeah so now I have all of asterisks drawn to the background here but I think it's a bit boring that they are all in the same size so let's change the size dynamically here as well so for doing that we can just say bar s we can say 1 2 and 4 for how big it should be, and I just say math.round, of course, don't forget the round there. Math.random, and times the length of this array uh, minus one, so that's two. That's just the same thing as we have up here, and yeah, all over the place. And I just divide this by the value of s. Open up on the reload page, we should get all different sizes of asteroids. Yeah, so that's cool. So we now have a bit more fun background <laughs> and that's most of the asteroid gear so most of the menu state done everything we need to check is we listen for is here you see say if input dot is pressed uh, spacebar again of course like that then we just want to change the state of the game so you say this game dot next state equals to the states dot game state. So let's see if that works. Hopefully now when I hit the space bar, yeah we get into the game state. Stuff like that. So that's cool. So we now have only have one state left of the game, the end state. And I will see how long is this video. Well it's oh, almost 40 minutes. So maybe I'll do that in a time lapse and I will show you the final result uh, uh, when I'm done. We can just add one thing here though. Uh, show one one thing for you guys. No, so and that's just to draw out the game over message to the canvas. So here we can say if this dot game over like that. Then we also say context vector text game over like that. And then we set set um, uh, uh, a scale factors. So let's say three again, or maybe four. Let's see what that looks like, and I will say null and null, of course, so that the message is centered. So let's just die real quick, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, let's see, bam, yeah, so we have the game over message. And basically, what we want to do is we want to say, say up here again. Here, we can say if this dot game over this dot game dot change 
I'm sorry, next state equals states dot uh, end like that, and we're going to return again, of course. Let's just create the end state, and then I will do the rest in that in that in the time time lapse and tell you what I've done when I'm back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so guys, I'm back. Uh, so hopefully there you could see a uh, time lapse of me developing the end state, uh, and I think that's uh, yeah, that's fine. The video should have been way too long if I shouldn't have done that. I think the record time now, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> one hour and uh, ten minutes. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to make that long videos. Anyway, so the game is now more or less finished. You could of course add some. Uh, yeah, finishing touches to the game, so you can see here when the asteroids are going down here, they are just uh, yeah sort of teleporting like that. And then you can force like draw, uh, yeah, draw uh, draw them so that they are smoothly going through the or looping over the canvas like that and stuff like that. Anyway, so the way the I could just play a bit here and uh, show you what the uh, end state looks like. So let's get some scores here. Get myself killed real quick here. Yep. So now you can see the game over message is uh, written out. And then if I press the space bar, I come to the end state here, and you can see that this name field up here is selected. And here I can write whatever I want. Let's, for example, say I write my name. So I write Max. And then I press Enter to move on. Now you get to this uh, menu screen here where it shows the high score and then you say press space to continue and here you can say this is just some arbitrary players. <laughs> uh, Son Goku he has of course over 9000 scores and the doctor he has 2000 scores and stuff like that. Anyway, so press space bar to continue and you, uh, that will give going to back to the menu state. Uh, so yeah, so as I said if you want to look at the complete source code then just go to my GitHub page, uh, github.com forward slash maxvilleboy. And in the repository here with YouTube tutorials, uh, that's a collection of all the source code for this particular series. And I will, of course, add the updated files uh, to this repository when I upload this video. Yeah, so are you thinking that maybe we could go through the, towards the end state real quick and the small changes I did? So the first change I did was in the main class here, where I just added the state bars uh, here. So that's global bars that uh, tra uh, that we can have to take uh, different variables between the states. So score here, of course, will be uh, in the in the game state here when we set uh, the next state to the end state. There uh, we just add the current score value to this uh, score field here that I set here. Anyway, and basically, and here from here, that's just where the 
where the end state come in so that in the constructor here it sets some variables here uh, like set the nickname to no name at start here and set the score to the state bar here that that we decided and this program doesn't have a real high school system I could add that but that should be could be a complete video in itself by yeah, PHP and stuff like that so I just hard coded in some scores here anyway then we grab an uh, input field from the document by an ID of name field that I just added here that's of course the one you see in the upper left corner there of course anyway and we focus it and select it the select method didn't um, work I don't know what that was about but anyway anyway and in the handle inputs we check if uh, the user has entered a name uh, and if it does then it just uh, listen for the spacebar input and when the spacebar is uh, pressed then it just takes us back to the menu state of course else we listen for the enter key uh, and that was uh, something I forgot to mention I just added the enter uh, key here with the key code of 13 to the input handler anyway and here we just take out the nickname from, uh, sorry, yeah, we replace uh, all non-numbers and uh, letters in the, yeah, in the nick, so, since we can't draw like dollar signs and stuff like that. Then we push the high score to the high score um, array like that, and then we sort the high score list by this sort function here and if you want to know more on, on how this work I yeah you could uh, search for the internet for that I think it isn't that complicated you just take a function here as an optional parameter and then then you can compare two objects uh, yeah and by doing this you sort them in uh, descending order uh, yeah with the with the larger score at start and small score at end and stuff like that anyway and in updates, we just focus the name field each frame. Uh, so we make sure that all the inputs are read from the player. And then we set the uh, value of the name field. We replace all the draw signs and that stuff again. And then we set the nick name to the, to the value of the name field. Stuff like that. And then the render method, it's really, really simple. It's just a pain to figure out <laughs> where all the texts are going to be written. But anyway. Uh, it just take the vector text method we just uh, created and write out the high score and set the scale factor to 3 and stuff like that center it in the x position and yeah loop through all the high scores and write them and this uh, end parameter here is so just an additional parameter added to the vector text method so if you go back to the canvas you could you see that I added this offset variable here uh, so that's if we want to draw text from the right to the left. Uh, then we just if then we just take the difference here in the length and offset and add uh, x and the step size times this difference here to get uh, the high scores align aligned to the right. So let's see if I can demo it for you really quick here. So it's gonna die quick. Yeah, you see here so that the high scores are drawn uh, from the right to the left. Like that, or align to the right, right uh, side of the canvas, like that. So that's really simple. And in the normal state, before we had pressed enter and it has enter a name, stuff like that, then we just draw out this thank you message and uh, the nickname and the uh, score, like so. So that's the end state there, guys, and the end of this video series. So I hope you have learned something uh, by looking on these videos. And yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. One final thing you can do though, if you don't want this uh, input field to be seen up there, you can just add a div and uh, yeah, place it over it. So let's do that real quick. That's quite simple. So you say div like so. And let's just set some styling of that div. So you set the background color to white and then by setting the position to absolute 
and the top to zero. Or oh, actually, we don't need to do that since the yeah default value is uh, top zero and left left zero. But we won't set the width. Let's set one R pixel and a height as well. Let's say fifty pixels. And why isn't that? Uh, <laughs> that should be drawn over the. Uh, 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 uh. Well, yeah, maybe we need to set the top position to top zero. Let's see, yeah, and let's uh, increase the width a bit to 100 pixels. Yeah, so now we don't see that as uh, input field uh, anymore if we don't want that. Yeah, so that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.